The Chicago Teachers Union is finding a lot of parents are disagreeing with its standoff with the city when it comes to remote learning. Many parents are left having to disrupt their lives, staying home from work, finding other sources of daycare, and to make matters worse, they don't find out until the night before that classes have been canceled once again. And this morning, we want your take. We are joined by two CPS parents to get their reactions. Juliet Goldstein, who has a high schooler at Whitney Young, and Andrew Scott, he has two children at CPS, one at Jones and the other at Lane Tech. Good morning to both of you. Thanks for joining me this morning. Good morning. Thanks for us. So I know you both want your students back in the classroom. Juliet, let's start with you. How do you feel about what's going on? I'm very frustrated at this point. Um, you know, they've been out of school four days now. And like you said earlier, we find out just the night before whether or not school is happening the next day. Um, I'm concerned about the loss of educational time, interpersonal connections that happen at school. And I'm not really sure these closures need to happen on a, on a system-wide basis right now. And Andrew, how about you? Um, like Juliet, I'm really disappointed. Uh, frankly, I mean, who didn't see this coming? Um, why does this have to be a crisis? Uh, you know, my kids are disappointed. They want to be in school. Everybody knew leading into the holidays that uh, Omicron was here, that it was a, it was potentially a problem. So why does it have to come to this crisis situation? Uh, why weren't they working on a plan? You know, kind of why are they they're negotiating over our kids rather than like trying to work together to find a solution? It's just it's disappointing and it's frustrating for the children and it's just not good for anybody. Let's talk about the teachers for a minute. And I want to get you guys jump in, whoever wants to answer this. Are you concerned at all for not only your children's safety or are you worried about the teacher's safety? You know, they say they are being put in these positions that not only make it unsafe for what they say is the entire school, but for themselves. What's your response to that? Andrew, I'll let you go first. My feeling, every, everybody's safety is a priority. And that goes back to what I said before is they knew this was an issue out there and why weren't they working back in December collaboratively to make sure that it's a safe environment for everybody, for the teachers, for people that enter the schools, for the students themselves. You know, everybody's safety needs to be a priority and there needs to be a plan in place to make sure that the schools are a safe environment. Juliet. Uh, I would echo what Andrew said, but also last night we were provided information from the district that showed that 90% of teachers and staff are fully vaccinated. So I'm not really sure where the concern for safety comes given the new information we have about Omicron that the city, state, local and federal governments have been providing that if you're vaccinated, you are more safe from hospitalization and death than we were prior to when we had treatments and vaccines available. Okay. So masking, vaccines, treatments seem to be providing the type of protection that we need against Omicron. Okay, let's talk about your children. Uh, I wanna get personal here. Um, I want to find out, maybe we can start with you on this one, Andrew. What are they saying to you? What's life been like for them? How has this impacted them, Andrew? So for my daughter that is a junior at Jones, uh, it, it's just, it, it's disappointing on a number of levels. Uh, she went through the strike back two years ago. Uh, so that was an interruption to her, you know, her time at school then, and then obviously 2020 and, you know, here it is again. And so she felt like she was just kind of hitting her stride and, you know, she enjoyed being with her close group of friends. She had a lunch group and now all that's turned upside down. And so it's, you know, it's heartbreaking to her uh, not to be with her friends and not to be in school. For my son, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, I asked him last night, how do you feel about all this? What, what's the latest, what's your thinking? And he's like, he said he would like to be with his friends too and he'd like to be in school. And he doesn't understand why, you know, the adults can't work this out. Julia, a lot has been made about how this affects mental health. I'm curious, have you seen that with your children? I have. Um, my daughter is a sophomore, so her entire freshman year was uh, online, and she did have feelings of isolation and being separated and wanted to be at school with people. Um, on Zoom, you know, their pictures are up, but they don't interact. They don't email each other. Um, so yes, she, she did go through a phase uh, where she did need to, to talk to someone about what was happening and, and how to deal with it. 
So the union's most recent proposal calls for district-wide remote learning starting Wednesday as school officials agree to set a additional safety protocols. But the mayor says she's not budging on this. What do you, the two of you see here as the solution? As I ask you the final question, and uh, Juliet, we'll start with you on this. Well, I think as the solution is they sit down at the table and they talk to each other. It appears, it appears right now that there's just arguing going on. And I worry about that example that's being set for the children as well, that they're not seeing a collaborative approach to coming back to school, rather each side focusing on winning only and putting their needs second. Andrew? I think something very similar. I think that they need to put aside all the acrimony. I think they need to recognize, you know, the kids should be first here. Uh, let's come up with a solution. I mean, my concern about going back to remote immediately, I mean, frankly, I think remote should have happened, uh, you know, back when everybody was done with holiday break and give us like a two week cooling off period. But really, you got to put aside sort of the posturing and the acrimony and let's come up with a plan that gets the kids back in school, ensures everybody is safe uh, as quickly as possible. So there's been a lot of talk about some frustrated parents moving their children out of CPS. Uh, here's a question for either of you. That's not something every parent can afford. What are you hearing from parents about how this is impacting them and their plans for the future? And has there been any talk about trying to take some steps if children are not back in the classroom sooner than later? Um, I'll start with that one. I think given the situation that my daughter endeared freshman year and now being back in school uh, at the beginning of this school year making friends, I think moving her at this point would be more of a detriment to her mental health and education than waiting this one out. But I do have a younger daughter who's in eighth grade and we are seeking out private school options. Andrew? Um, I think same thing. I mean, it, it would be very disruptive if it's been hard enough on my daughter. We're obviously not going to take her out. And, you know, those that are in the CPS system, uh, they're going to stay. Uh, you know, for my youngest, I've got another one that's an eighth, a seventh grader. And, you know, we really have to look at it because it, they're not uh, other schools. I mean, there are other options in the city. And we're fortunate enough to be in a position where we might be able to take advantage of those. But frankly, this is problematic going forward. I mean, how does this look for other parents? You know, do they decide to raise their kids in Chicago or just because of everything that goes on, do they just decide Chicago is not for them? And I think it's, it's a problem today, but it's also, you know, how does it affect Chicago's reputation for families going forward? And I think that's a real problem. Yeah, there's no doubt about the whole nation is looking at what's going on with the teachers union here. So Juliet Goldstein, Andrew Scott, thank you so much for joining me this morning, and I hope your children are back in the classroom for your sake sometime this week. Thanks again. Thank you Thank very you. much. Appreciate it. Good to have you. We'll be right back.